Okay, the last part of our uh, chapter on roadcast engines is this uh, part three, where we talk about engine intake protection systems. I mentioned very briefly that uh, the helicopters operate in a very uh, uh, dirty environments very often, you know, unprotected, unprotected uh, uh, situations where you have, uh, you know, uh, landing and taking off from uh, just about anywhere where there isn't, uh, you know, a paved surface. So that creates problems. Uh, not only in the engines, but also on the road blades, but that's uh, that's a separate problem. So what we want to look at in this particular uh, lecture is uh, um, the intake protection systems, which is something that is uh, either fitted on the outside or fitted inside uh, uh, the engine. What you can see in this uh, two pictures is essentially is uh, one of the systems, one of the three that are known in, uh, in the rotorcraft engineering called the uh, inertial particle separator. So, um, so for example, if you take if you take the the picture on on the left here, what you see is that there is a kind of a plate. Okay, so there's a big uh, sort of plate in front of the intake. The intake would be this one. So the idea is that the particles uh, are arriving, uh, uh, you know, with with the inflow, basically hit the solid uh, solid surface, and then uh, they bounce they bounce back. So this is the, this is the idea. Um, now this is this is actually working this way. So as long as the particles are fairly big, when the particles are very small, they are actually sucked in into the air, uh, and they follow just the, the the streamlines into into the engines. So you have uh, very very tiny particles just going around and eventually going in, into the engine. So the idea of the idea behind this uh, particle separator is that it's called the inertia separator because. Uh, Essentially, what it does is uh, creates a very large curvature, curvature of the intake of the of the engine, and uh, the large particles are unable to follow this large curvature, curvature, and then they are expelled out. In this case, by uh, bouncing off. In other cases, by uh, basically channeling into a scavenge flow, as, I, as I'm going to show you uh, shortly. So this is uh, an intake protection system, which is actually been quite popular with. Uh, um, Soviet and then Russian helicopters. So uh, I don't remember where I've taken this picture, but this is certainly a, a Russian helicopter. So this is a part inertial particle separator, which is uh, uh, external. I've said this is external, and you find it applied also on this on this particular helicopter. You see the arrows. This is a, a three-engine uh, rotorcraft. Remember what we've done in the previous uh, part and part two, when we tried to optimize uh, the, um, the fuel consumption of, um, of uh, the helicopter that had the three engines. So you've got two engines here, one and two side by side, and then there is one engine on top. So the idea is that you know in some flight conditions you can uh, you know perhaps disengage this from the main uh, um, transmission system and then operate it with two. With two engines in here, you can see also the the exhaust. The exhaust is lateral, so it goes out there. So it's very very large exhaust, and that would take the exhaust effectively of uh, this this engine here. So it would be the engine in front with the exhaust of the central engine would have to be at the back, from somewhere there. So you just uh, just a question for you. Uh, I would say you know if you're interested. Uh, so let me clear this row in here. <clears throat> So just to tell me which which helicopter you think this one is, and uh, just email to me your answer. Just out of just getting a bit of a of a quiz out of this uh, uh, particular um, helicopter. So the second the system is called the vortex tube separator. Is been um, this is an American sort of uh, uh, technology. It's been applied in a number of helicopters, uh, um, particularly the Chinook. The Chinook is is that uh, uh, is a is a big pack of vortex tubes uh, on the outside. Uh, of the engine. I'm going to show some pictures. And finally, there are the barrier filters. The barrier filters are essentially like filters which are stuck in front of the, of the engine, and then they basically separate the flow. And therefore, what happens is that the, this particulate gets stuck into this filter, and the filter gets clogged, and eventually is to be cleaned. We'll see this one, one at a time. So anyway, we start with this uh, case here, which is the externally mounted inertial particle separator. And by the way, I have to say, I said this in the previous uh, session that if you do not need the, the particle separator because you're flying in a clear atmosphere and you're flying to and from uh, prepared surfaces, what you need to do is to remove uh, is to remove the the separator because it will only create intake losses. So the idea is that if you can have something that can be externally mounted and dismounted, that would be the easiest way. 
if it is something integral uh, with the engine, then there is much you can do. And I'll show you next. So this is a design which is an integral uh, design of a, of a particle separator. So this is a turbo shaft engine. And the intake, the intake is, uh, is essentially here to the left of the page. And uh, is uh, this part here. So you see there is a kind of a Y shape. So the flow comes from here. Eventually it is uh, sucked into the intake in there. Whilst the particles, the heavy particles are unable to follow the flow and they go, they go outside. So this is the idea. So this is the inflow. And um, so there is a very large curvature. So the core flow goes into the engine and um, and the flow which is uh, laden with the heavy particulate is unable to follow the high curvature of uh, of the tube of the channel and there is for is uh, get, getting out of here this is called the scavenge scavenge flow uh, often uh, there are pumps that uh, scavenge this uh, flow out of uh, out of here so the thing with the pumps is that you got to have them often otherwise you get recirculation zones you get the loss of uh, loss of uh, uh, inflow in here and uh, so, so the particles are basically sucked back into the engine, and this is certainly not a good thing. So there are some pumps called the scavenge pumps, and the bad thing about scavenge pumps is that, of course, they need uh, they need the power, and uh, the power has to come from somewhere, and it will be taken obviously either from the APU or from uh, uh, you know an outtake from uh, the compressor, one of the stages of the compressor. So that adds to effectively the losses. So you have two types of losses. One would be because of pressure losses, as we'll see shortly in the intake. So this section here is subject to really intake, intake uh, uh, losses in the pressure. So you got a pressure at the face of the engine and you have a, a pressure at the face of the compressor. And usually there is a loss in pressure in there. This is not good because when you have loss in pressure, the compressor has to work harder to create the pressure is required to operate the design point. So this is how an integrated particle separator system works. It's called the IPS, and it's found in some uh, uh, engines like, for example, uh, the RTM-322, uh, which used to be a Rolls-Royce engine, now is a French, uh, uh, it's a French engine. Uh, they have to just sell that, the rights to that engine, and is no longer produced in the UK. So this is an integral uh, integral part of uh, of the design of uh, of the of the power plant. So the IPS characteristics are listed here. So uh, they are integrated to the engine inlet. Uh, the particles are forced around the hump because they are too heavy. They cannot follow the curvature, and therefore they they go through a scavenge uh, channel, leaving uh, the core air cleaner, though not very clean. So. What we say in this case is there is a separation efficiency. The separation can be measured in a number of ways, but uh, one way of doing this is through mass. Okay, so you you, you calculate the concentration of uh, the inflow. So you have a concentration of uh, maybe not 4.1 percent, so on, and uh, the efficiency is defined by the the amount of mass which is scavenged out of the engine. So you may have uh, one, two, three, five percent of of uh, particulate which uh, is not able to escape because the particles are too small and therefore they get into into the intake and they would end up causing damage i will show some example of what kind of damage you will see in the engines so this is an idea which is rather old has been developed since 1970s first uh, for the tisman under the engine and then was applied more recently to uh, the rtm 322 as i just mentioned there are other engines i would say if you don't need the sort of uh, of a separator you know the manufacturer can provide you with uh, with an engine design that does not have an internally you know integrated uh, um, ips so there are large flow speeds into the engine up to 90 meters per second so it's very fast uh, with the with the inflows of the order one two maybe three three kilograms per second uh, depending on the, on the size of the engine that results in a very large pressure losses of the order one kilopascal just to give you an idea, one kilopascal is about 1% of the atmospheric pressure at the sea level. So you can get the good efficiency, uh, separation efficiency for particulates uh, uh, that have a size above uh, 10 microns. So smaller particulate uh, then, uh, you know, that tends to just uh, follow follow the, 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 the inflow and the, and the gets into the intake of the compressor. And uh, there must be a way to, to just get rid of it later on. But the damage created depends on not only on the size, but also on the shape of these particles, on the material, the chemistry, and many other other uh, you know parameters. 
the final system is the, is the inlet barrier filter called the IPF. And this is a, a system which we've done a lot of research, and also in the previous one, I have to say, in the past several years. So what you see is that this pack mounted, there's a pack of, of, of separated filters uh, uh, packed in front, of, in front of the engine. The engine intake, you can't even see it. There is this big box in front. So you've got a filter on this side, you've got a filter on the front, there will be a filter on the other side. So it's a big pack, heavy heavy stuff. This is on another lighter helicopter, but the system is the same. If you, were, if you were to just look at it, what you find is a pleated, a pleated filter. So it's a, it's a shaped like a V. If you go and zoom a bit uh, more, what you find is you've got some fibers, okay? So the idea is that any particle to get in, uh, get in here gets stuck. You know, you get a big particle and uh, perhaps I should change color with this. Uh, let's call it uh, maybe red. Say, say you get the particle and it gets stuck in there. There's another particle that gets stuck in there, another particle is stuck in there. And soon enough, you know, if you've got all this particle stuck, stuck on the filter, the filter gets clogged. Okay, so you've got a layer of, of, this, uh, of this dust in there. And sooner or later, you've got to, you know, be able to, to clean this. It, sometimes what is done is just to remove uh, the pack out of uh, the separator. It's just uh, shaken and then uh, washed. And, you know, you can get some, uh, some uh, extra life out of it. But there is after a number of washes, after a number of cycles, there is a permanent damage and then you can't use it uh, anymore. But at least, you know, in, in the very simple uh, ways, of, there are simple ways to work recovering some uh, some efficiency of, of out of the filter. So this is good because it can filter very, very small particles. Uh, but the problem is that uh, it creates uh, a big pressure loss at the intake. And the pressure loss increases with uh, with increase in, in particulate, which is get gets stuck in at, at the fiber scale. So the barrier, barrier filters, just to describe them a bit more, they are uh, they are barrier, barriers of uh, pleated uh, pleated uh, filters. So these are generally you know materials which you, you can buy from uh, from industry just spe specialize in in filter filtration. Uh, they're woven, you know, there are several layers between uh, 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 fibers. And so it, basically at the layers, you add, you add the protection. They have a very high separation efficiency, but the problem is that they, they do a steady clogging. So they get stuck in there. And what happens is that the pressure loss increases up to a point where, uh, you know, it gets, it stabilizes, stabilizes, so it's asymptotic, this pressure loss. There is a point to, by the time you get a pressure loss, total pressure loss of two and a half to three kilopascal, that's the time where you just need to stop, remove it, and uh, and trying to clean it or replace it with uh, some other uh, filter. Um, so there are some very large uh, IBF, as you see in the picture on the previous page. Uh, they, they show very poor RAM recovery at very high flight speeds, so there is a problem for the performance of the engine as well. So at the high flight speeds, uh, you really don't need them, you know, high flight speeds, usually you achieve them at uh, also high altitudes where the air is generally cleaner. And there are in fact some, uh, some of these protection systems which can be open or closed. So for example, you close them when you reach the ground, so we're nearing, you know, approach, final approach and landing or take off and climb out, you know, you, 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 you have them deployed and then you open, you open the doors, so to speak, when you are in, uh, in a free flight. But there must be a way, you know, even when they're open, to decrease to decrease the drag because they already are heavy by themselves. So then there is the vortex tube. The vortex tube separators are essentially uh, this uh, this sort of devices shown in here. They're just made of plastic, um, which is good in the sense that um, you know they're light, but they also tend to be damaged. And they also got the risk sometimes that uh, they, they, if there is a very cold air and there is in icing conditions, they get blocked by ice. So the idea is that you got uh, essentially this is cylindrical. There is a helix in front, and then there is uh, two cylinders. Okay, so the flow comes in here, and the, what happens is that the particulate find, uh, of course, a solid surface, and uh, essentially what is is supposed to bounce off and back, and it bounces again. So it bounces eventually. It goes outside and is scavenged on the outside floor. So a particle that come in here bounces off here, then bounces off there, bounces off there. Eventually, what you do is you you get the particle flying out in that direction, and the swell, you know, here. Hopefully, you you hope that you know the the particle that goes onto onto the onto the scavenge size, which will leave uh, the um, the central or the core that would be the clean air. In here, 
right? Um, usually it works all right. So essentially the system works in terms of, of the favoring the bouncing rather than centrifugal uh, effects or the two of them are together because you've got centrifugal flow, but there is not a, a moving helix. This is, this is fixed. Uh, and, and therefore the, the, the only way you can get the particles to just go to the, to the outer side of, um, of the cylinder is that they just bounce and then because of the high speed they get uh, sucked out in this uh, scavenge, uh, scavenge uh, flow. So this is, would be a scavenge channel and there would be a, a collector. Often there is a pump, a scavenge pump down here because that facilitates the, the particles uh, it just to be to be taken out of, of uh, the system. So um, the helix says induces swirl, but but the main the main mechanism for this particles to actually be sucked away is the multiple bouncing. These are a very very uh, high uh, separation efficiency. The problem is that they have a large frontal area, which causes a very large uh, pressure drop. They can become clogged with the uh, uh, FOD. The FOD is for, for an object debris. You imagine it's a large particle not going anywhere. It gets stuck in here. OK, as I said, that this is plastic. It's not a very, very hard wearing. So you will get a lot of erosion. So there is a limited lifetime for this uh, for this thing. Sometimes you get, you know, look at this pack of uh, separators. You say you find some holes here and there because all this stuff uh, is damaged. So you see that the, the error is to is to go through quite a a few passages before eventually is let in into the into the inlet of the engine and eventually into the compressor and that's all you need to do when you actually want to operate from uh, unprepared surfaces so although it's true that helicopters can operate from anywhere to anywhere that comes with a caveat and the caveat is that you've got to be able to protect your aircraft you've got to be able to protect your engines otherwise within a few hours of operation you know you, you may find that there is irreparable uh, uh, damage and you want to prevent that. I mean, if you don't do this, for example, on the Chinook, uh, Chinook CH 47 operating in, in a high deserts of, uh, of certain Asian country, we've seen, we've seen damage uh, uh, in the engines within 50 hours of operation. And each of these engines costing about a million dollars each. You would imagine after 50 hours of operation, uh, you, you destroyed the two of them and uh, you blown away uh, $2 million just like that 50 hours of operation so the efficiency versus pressure loss is uh, is always uh, uh, well it's one of those compromises you need to take in engineering you know sometimes you achieve a good result this paints as something else so the separators uh, have a various various uh, uh, separation efficiencies that depends on the type of uh, dust that you, you use there are various uh, test dust around the world a famous one is the Arizona uh, test dust that has been used for testing various various uh, engines, but we've been working on other different uh, uh, test dust uh, ourselves in the past few years. So the inlet barrier filter has the highest uh, separation efficiency, 99%. So as I said, 99% of the mass is uh, basically kept away from uh, the engine intake. The vortex tube separator does also very well, 95%. The inertial particle separator does a bit uh, less. Uh, however, I need to tell you here, there's a caveat that th these numbers do depend on the type of uh, test dust that you have. Where you're flying, what is the particle uh, the density, the, the, the diameter distribution, you know. So this is uh, just telling you that the diameter distribution of these particles is between 2 and 200 uh, micrometers with a main, main diameter of 38 uh, micrometers. If you change you know, the particulate, then the, the, the separation is uh, is different. And by the way, this is a separation with the new clean uh, separators. If the separators get clogged, then the performance gets slightly uh, worse. But just to give you some numbers there, and there's a lot of research going on in this area in the, in the separation, in the separation of particles, dust, volcanic ash, uh, salt, uh, and so on. So, uh, intake pressure losses is caused by the presence of VIPs can uh, can cause uh, up to 10% of power loss. So if you operate in, in an area where you see this Chinook, you know, very high, hot uh, desert uh, with the unprepared surfaces, you know, raising uh, a, a huge cloud of dust, then, uh, you know, losing 10% of your power is just, uh, is just basically very, very much limiting your operations because you may need to operate a maximum takeoff weight. You might do, you know, some emergency rescue and, and you need all, all the power you, you have, uh, at least the uh, nominal power you have. 
So a life cycle analysis is required for the overall cost benefit assessment. So you actually need them. And besides, and the picture isn't very good here because what it shows is uh, there is a lot of yeah, a lot of dust, a lot of dust. But I mean, it's it's shown here. This is this is the separator. This one on this engine and the other engine on the other side, which you're not able to see in uh, in this case. And this is an example of of uh, damage. Uh, this is a work we've been doing now for the past uh, several years, looking at uh, engine damage, and we got quite an expertise in this area. So it depends on the dust severity. So you know what is the time, what is the concentration, that means what is the dosage of of a particular inside the compressors. And so these are these are compressor blades. Um, we see here. See how the the leading edge line has been eroded. So the leading edge line, instead of being straight here. It's got this chipping in there, and there is this other chipping in there. So this is an area where you have very high speeds, you know, very high impact. And there is also the whole erosion of the entire leading edge. You can see here, you imagine what kind of particulate that gets in there. There is a big, big strike. There is another big strike in there. So this compressor is basically gone. This is uh, on the hot section of the engine. So this is a turbine stage. Look at what's happening there. You know, there's hardly anything left. And of course, all this is tends to uh, basically change the shape of the airfoil in here. All this area has been eroded. So the trailing edge has been eroded. The, the leading edge here gets this hump of uh, dust, which seems to be growing bigger and bigger. So what you have is that this, this area of, of dust growing, or particularly growing on the blades, basically reduces the, 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 the area you know, of the cascade and therefore the flow cannot pass through. So the, the flow is essentially blocked and you risk, you know, uh, a surge in, uh, in in that case. So this is an example of what kind of things can happen if you just don't take care of, of your engines. So that's just about what I wanted to say about this area. So that gets a bit, uh, uh, you know, uh, out of the main thrust of, uh, of the course. So I just want to leave it there. And I want to make a summary of key points of all the, the three parts we have discussed in the Rotocraft engines. So we'll give you know, some characteristics of Rotocraft power plants. I told you these are gas turbine engines, mostly, and they are uh, designed for delivering uh, torque rather than thrust. So they're called turbo shaft. There are obviously certification issues which have to do with, uh, you know, uh, first of all, with the power delivered and in various in various uh, uh, situations and um, also the speeds and so on. We looked at the examples of transmission and powertrain. I told you how this can be actually very complicated, particularly for uh, twin engine or multi-engine helicopters. But I mean, the essential uh, concept you need to take into account here is that you need to always to have a redundancy, okay? So the transmission has to be in such a way that uh, there is a one central shaft which takes the torque from all available engines. So that if there is a loss of torque from one engine, the, the, the main shaft keeps keeps moving and keeps keeps moving, of course, the main rotor and the tail rotor. We'll just give you some examples of gas turbine performance. Just tell you, you know, what, what is the meaning of uh, uh, SFC, why it is important, uh, uh, what you can do for improving it, you know, what is the benefit of having, uh, a, you know, multi-engine helicopters uh, working with the one engine in operative. Power ratings, remember, power ratings are very important. You have, uh, you know, various power ratings. You got the uh, maximum continuous power that you can have for when, when you run the engine indefinitely, the maximum maintenance power, and so on. So just to go and look at those when you revise. Atmospheric effects on performance. So we looked at the effects of temperature, we looked at the effects of pressure. And finally, in this final lecture, so just look at the deterioration effects. So the effects on the engine, which come you know, from uh, just ingesting very, very dirty air. So to avoid all this uh, damage, what you need is to have engine protection systems. And there is a, a, a brand, a new technology goes there. There is to integrate, be integrated with uh, with the engine first and then and then with the aircraft. Okay, so this closes this chapter and I uh, hope you enjoyed, you learned something useful. For any questions, just get back to me for further discussion. Okay.